Hi, chums. Um, as I mentioned a couple of times, I was making pens and someone asked me could they see them. So here's the pens I've been making this last couple of days. Um, this top row first, well these are all slim lines. And uh, they're, they're nice pen. There's one there I'd never seen before. That's a, a form of, that's a Corian, it's a grey Corian. And it has um, a black kit. And look, come out very well, I quite like that one, you know. These here, these are all Corian as well. That was one of the hardest pens I ever turned there. Because I only had about just slightly more than two millimetres of thickness of material to work with on in on, in terms of circumference of the, around the blank. So I had to drill it and turn it without going through the tubes and I actually I, I made it okay, you know. And it looks nice. I've never seen Corian like that before. But it's quite a nice one I think. There's my favourite there of the ones I've turned so far. Um these are all slim lines. They're just a little twist pen that, that I'll just see if I can get myself into focus here. They just twist like that there. They just they just twist the top and the nib comes out, you know, the end comes out. They're a beautiful writing pen. These are real cheaply pens, you know. Um, in terms of get in terms of getting band kits from across millions of miles away, you know. But that one there is that's oh, sorry, Burwish Shellum. Isn't that lovely? I'd I'd never done I'd never turned Burwood Shellum before and I was very concerned that this would be all full of holes. Now it's not a perfect surface by any means, but I could have filled it with epoxy or with super glue, but I decided to leave it because it actually feels really, really nice and a little bit of inconsistency. Um we can just feel the edge of the, of the wee depressions. It's really it feels like you're actually dealing with a burr, you know, instead of something like with plastic on it, you know. So I decided to leave it, and that's okay, I might keep that one actually because that was a real nice one. I like that one myself. Um, I just show you some of these other words. There's a a piece of walnut, right? Walnut, right? And that that's a nice piece there. You know what that was? That was from a scrap of flooring that was put in somebody's house, put in a hardwood floor, and that was a bit of the scrap that was left over. It's like a beautiful markings in it. It actually looks better than the original piece I was given. But this is the problem with wood, when you cut into it, you see what's underneath the surface and sometimes you go in far enough that you find real nice stuff like that. And then it's also the, the curse of wood, because the further you go in, the, the more you think, I wonder if you should have stopped, or it, does it get better when I'm in further? And then you go too far and lo and behold, you know, that's you. Now it's not as bright as some of the other you you'll see, because that has been sitting for a couple of years before it was turned as a pen blank, so it's got, wood gets darker. So it's got a bit darker, you know, but it's actually very nice, I think, you know. It's a nice little pen. Just wind it back in again there. So it's a nice wee pen. But that's that that's it. So those are all slim lines. Oak again, this one here, this is oak. And once again, it's a floorboard. You know, you don't have to spend a lot of money on wood to make nice pens, you know. You just look around and see what people are getting done and say to people, if they're getting a floor pen, can I have some of your off cuts, please? These are all kitchen Korean from kitchens. There, that's all the off cuts from that, you know. So I mean, it's not a huge amount of money. Um, the the ones that I had to pay for that one there, that was us olive ash, I think. No, it's not. It's witch elm. Witch elm, it's nice. Now this is interesting here, right? There's that's the witch elm, okay. That's our Scots pine. Or no, Scots elm, Scots elm, or witch elm. W Y C H. Elm. I don't know why they call it. Maybe they hanged witches out of that tree or something, you know. Or they took Elm. But there's the other one. Look. That's the. Was that the Burr Witch Elm? Burr. Yeah. And that's the Burr on exactly the same wood. Look at the difference in them. Well, I'll get the paper out of the way. The papers are a sort of a, a necessary curse because people say, what wood's that? Now, I remember what that one is, but see when you put this beside all of ash, you, 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 can, you, you don't know where it is in. So those are the wee slim lines, and then these ones here, I'll just try and move this camera down now, without wrecking the joint. These are all, these are the, the, the heavier pens. These are the, um, there's Paolo Rosa. These are a two-piece pen. And it comes apart, it's called a baron, and then the top screws onto the back. So it, it actually is a heavy pen, but it actually balances really lovely in your hand, you know. So those are those are a nice pen there. 
These are very good. These are a superb kits, sir, from Taiwan. They're not. They're not uh, Chinese. Now, before you get don't jump, don't, before you think I'm knocking China here, I'm not. There's some really good stuff coming out of China, like jet lathes. But um, it, it all depends on quality control. And I think a lot of the companies that went to China to get cheap labour are realising that they're getting cheap labour, but they weren't getting the quality, and people aren't buying the stuff. So now they're implementing their own quality control and. The stuff's getting really, really good, you know. Most I've, let's put it this: I've never been let down by something I bought from China, so uh, that's it's good enough for me, you know. Um, there's one there, hard, hard, hard to turn ebony. That is really uh, that's tricky to turn. I, I had never turned it before, but I found it quite tricky, you know. And it's got a grain. You wouldn't think it had, but it has got a grain. It shows you why African blackwood can get it off with being called ebony because they're very very similar you know ebony is not completely black with a little bit of brown in it you know and um, the depends where part of the tree it comes from there's another u pen there now see that's a younger u that's one that's been cut a lot uh, has been cut but hasn't been exposed as long as this one here you see a difference in the color obviously each tree varies but essentially the most u is about this color here when you cut it first you know um, what else was there now? There's another one I wanted to show you there. Pink ivory, Indonesian rosewood. Indonesian rosewood. That's nice. You, yes, there, you, there we are. Um, that's another one from from a floorboard. Um, another piece of scrap. That's Cipelle. Isn't that nice? Now the reason, and the reason to put the tags on it is virtually impossible unless you get something like that, quilted maple, which is very obviously quilted. You can see, I hope the light picks up on that there, the way the light goes on it. Um, that's quilted maple. Now that's expensive stuff, you know. But, um, it's expensive in Ireland anyway, but it picks up nicely. But see these kits here I'm using here? Those are ones called, um, these, these are called Trivalent Chrome. Trivalent chrome is an industrial chrome that's used for high high wear applications where they need very smooth, very high wearing. So chrome is very smooth, but it doesn't wear very well. But trivalent chrome is a form of chrome that is much, much, much harder than standard chrome and can be put into like inside engines and stuff like that there. But the problem is, to every, all engineering is a compromise. So the compromise here is you lose some of the brightness of the chrome but you get a really durable finish instead. I think that's really classy. It's almost like a bit of understatement about that, you know? It's really lovely. I am gonna make all my pens with trivial and chrome from now on. It's a really, I think it's really classy looking. It's really, those, all, those, all those pens there are trivial and chrome. And I don't have an ordinary chrome one with me to show you the difference. That's just a, that's just a, where is it? That's an acrylic pen there. Those are nice, those are quite heavy. Those are nice. And I like that one there, that one's called Apple something, Apple Tang, that one's called. Oh, I think that's a lovely, a lovely one. There's another pen over here, broke, will you see that? Oh, it's, it, looks like, it looks like toffee or something, melted toffee. Right, now you wouldn't think there's anything wrong with that, would you? But there is, what do you see? No. Just at my fingernail, excuse my filthy hands. I got epoxy all over my hands the other night. I don't know if you can see the wee tiny crack. I'll find something pointy that I can point with. What do you see? There's a wee tiny thing there. Let's see if we can get those together now. Where's it? I can't even find the crack now. There's it there. See, there's a wee tiny crack just there. That, that pen's scrap now. So that just goes over to the scrap bin. Um, actually, what I did was I tried to turn it round. I, I've got. It, I can take the pens apart. If you know, it's not easy, but you can do it. But what I discovered with these acrylic pens, the clip actually makes a dent in the barrel because this is obviously soft to the metal and it makes a wee dent. So I couldn't turn it round because I couldn't cover the dent. But I wouldn't. I would never ever. I don't sell pens anyway. But if I did sell, I would never sell a pen that you were something wrong with, you know. But there you go. So um. So to say, these are for another project, which I'll explain. I can't talk much about it now, but um, I'll explain more about what's going on and why I haven't been online so much recently. Nothing, there's nothing bad going on. It's all good, okay? So there we are. That's just a box of pens. Somebody asked, could they see them? And uh, that's them. So that's it. these are your pens here. Back up to the back up to the wee ones again. 
These are actually my favourites. They're a lovely, lovely pen to use as an everyday pen. What's your EDC, my everyday carry pen. You know all these boys with the knives and everything and, and the guns and all the rest of it. What's your EDC, hey? This is my EDC here. You know, my everyday carry. So there you go. Um, that's it. All right. I have to get on now and have to make a mirror for Saturday. And there's another guy called Alan Simpson and... I'm up against it, you know, I'm up against it, and I think he's had spies down here and a bit of an industrial espionage going on because he's getting information out of me that he shouldn't be getting, but he's a very sneaky, sneaky person and he can get stuff out of you without even knowing that he's got it, you know, and I mean, let's put it like this, this is competition, this is ruthless, you know, anybody who said it's taking part that matters has never won a competition, you know, it's, this, is, this is about all or nothing, you know, and no lives shall be spared. Okay, all the best now. Bye-bye.